What's up friends, welcome to my channel where we're doing original music, music covers, album reviews, song reviews, a little bit of politics and social commentary here and there, something I'm not touching with a 10 foot pole right now, but uh, whatever the day calls for. If you like what you see here, please subscribe to the channel. If you have any content on here, I'll subscribe to you as well. I'm all about supporting up and comers here. Uh, today we're doing an album review of a very anticipated release, the brand new album, The Death of Peace of Mind, from the band Bad Omens. There are so many bands out there at this point, man. So many bands. It, it's so easy for a standout band to get lost in the mix due to the quantity of bands in the worlds of uh, metalcore, deathcore, and pop punk. The three genres that the majority of my music tastes lie. Um... Bands slip under your radar, and that's precisely what the existence of Bad Omens did for me. Um, I actually think, looking back, that I've actually seen this band live before and didn't even realize it because um, I was there for somebody else. I want to say it was We Came as Romans, um, but don't quote me on that. But I think I've actually seen this band live before, and I just don't remember. Um, but eventually their songs Limits and Dethrone found their way to me. And then the title track for this album come came to me, and it definitely stuck with me. Um, that song is going to have its place in this review, though, so I'm just going to say that as time went on, leading up to this release, I was following what was released from there and was looking forward to this release. But my knowledge of this band's past work is limited. I know about Limits which was a pretty good post-hardcore jam, and I know about Dethrone, which had a very cool kind of video, and uh, it just kind of focused on being, like, dark and heavy, so maybe this is a band that's mostly, like, metalcore, maybe deathcore, or maybe they're more of a post-hardcore outfit. Um, at this point, I didn't really know, um, but they were on my radar once I heard the title track. Um, what I know about this album going into it is that it was safe to assume we were going to be focusing on the melodic and less heavy side of the band. I also assumed that this album was going to be very vocal and lyric based. And uh, that the music would most likely just be a vehicle for the vocals and lyrics of their vocalist Noah Sebastian. Being that this album is five, 15 songs at 53 minutes, I also assume we'll get some heavy bangers in here. They already released one as a single, Artificial Suicide. A heavy banger that I like so much that I covered it here on my channel. Um, I figure at 15 songs at 53 minutes, we'll be taking on some kind of journey here. Um, and the band clearly has something to say with this project. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going into this band having heard three of the four singles released and two non-singles. The rest will be uh, a first impression review of a song. I always do track by track covers, so everything worth mentioning about an album is discussed. And then the final analysis of the project as a whole will be given at the end. So, um, yeah, uh, we're going into something new here. Um, I'm going into this with the mindset that we're going to be looking at some new sounds. I really hope I end up liking this album because I bought that shit. Um, we're also going into this, uh, trying a new beverage, uh, Fest Beer by Victory. Um, anybody from PA that's, uh, a beer connoisseur knows that Victory brings some pretty good beverages, so, yeah. too bad very hoppy um, definitely not a chugging beer but okay let's 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 dive into this album uh, number one is concrete jungle this is one of the non singles I already heard and I was surprised that we weren't starting off with a heavier track here we're greeted with synth pop instead of uh, instead of like metalcore and it's definitely top-notch uh, I love the beats Noah sounds amazing but yeah, this is going to be a definitely different sounding album than what I expected. Uh, when the song does get a bit heavier, 
It's very brief and it's very new metal sounding. The chorus is great and this is a good opener but it should have been heavier. Let's move on. Number two, Nowhere to Go. This song is just a blender of amazing sections, just one after another. This song has some foreboding, atmospheric sounding verses with Noah slipping in and out of major and minor key vocal progressions and the rest of the song just uh, brings the post-hardcore flavor. Great chorus that sounds fresh yet familiar at the same time. This breakdown section once again brings a new metal feel, but it's done much better here. This is a top 10 out of 10 track. I love this one. The first thing I'll probably do when this review is over is go back and listen to this song again. Um, Nowhere to go is a top track. Um, so let's move on. Number three, Take Me First. This is where you realize that there's no point even trying to practice singing to this fucking dude. I, I probably still would, but goddamn Noah, goddamn. I mean, this is very much a pop song with guitars. Not the cheery, happy, vapid kind, though. I mean, it's like a darker kind of pop. But Noah, man, he just like slays it. Um, just going in and out of all these different ranges and key changes and... Yeah, it, the vocals are just so good. There's nothing heavy in this song. It's just a master class in amazing vocals and hooks. And it's a top track. Number four, The Death of Peace of Mind. Um, here we are, the song that started the hype. The raunchy and sexual, uh, yet morbid lyrics, the hook that sticks with you for hours. Everything in this song is made for rock radio and has vibes of bands I don't really care for much. But it sounds so much better in the fact that they can bring this type of vibe and do this type of sound and hook somebody in that's definitely not a fan of bands like Breaking Benjamin or Three Days Greatest Song. But still kind of do that kind of thing. It just shows their talent as a band, how much they do it better than those kind of bands. And that they're all about satiating their bass but bringing in some new people as well. So um, it's a great single to draw new people into this band. And everything in here is done perfectly. So even though it might not be what the metalcore listener is looking for, it's still a 10 out of 10 track for what it's seeking out to do here. And it's a great title track, great representative of the album. Um, so yeah, moving on. Number five, What It Cost. This is an intro to the next track, Like a Villain, with some great vocals. And once again, the synth pop ele elements, ele Elevate the track. Blech. It's a tongue twister. The synth pop elements elevate the track. And then we go into the track that it's leading into, which is number six, Like a Villain. Um, this is another single. I've listened to it many times. It's one of my favorites. Um, it has a similar vibe to the title track. And it's a great song for all of the same reasons. There's nothing really I can say about this song that hasn't been said already. Uh, it's the classic formula that they apparently do, where it's like a, an atmospheric, maybe electronic kind of uh, verse with the post-hardcore chorus, a new metalish kind of bridge or breakdown. But it's done well, what can I say? Um, let's just move on. Number seven, Bad Decisions. This song is 100% synth pop. Um, you could swap... Noah Sebastian out with Dan Smith or uh, the guy from The weekend, Abel. Throw a more bleak curtain over the musical landscape and I could see Bastille or The weekend doing something like this. I love it man. I I'll say though we're seven tracks in and there's been no songs yet that focuses on the heavier side of their sound. But again, this is a top track and it's done so well, I don't really want to complain about it because I'm going to listen to it again. It's, it's really good. Um, but it is very much a synth pop song. We still have eight songs yet to go and at this point, everything has been enjoyable. Um, so let's just keep going. Number eight is Just Pretend. This song is more of the same. It's kind of generic. It, it would have been better if this song was a song where the instrumentation took front and center and we heard the guitars do more than just be there but we don't get that um this isn't bad but if it had been cut 
or replaced with a heavy track, I'd have been just fine with that. Um, I don't know how the guitarist and bassist aren't getting bored at this point. This is really average. Moving on, number nine, The Gray. This was a single I heard already also, and I'm sure many other people listening to this review have heard it also. Um, I think this is the last one they released before dropping the album, and it's a good one. It's a merging of synth pop and post-hardcore and Noah flexing the vocal chops. There are moments in the chorus where he hits higher registers that bring about vibes of uh, Cove Reber era Seosin. Any more headbanging moments in the song are new metalish again. This is a great song, but I'm ready for something other than the synth pop verses, the post hardcore chorus, and new metal breakdown formula. But this song will definitely help them get bigger, and it's a good choice for a single, for sure. Um, number 10, Who Are You? I did the best thing I could have possibly done before going into this one. I took a break. Uh, I walked away for a little bit, and I smoked a bowl, and I got real high, and being that this song is completely synth-pop and it has a very spacey and trippy vibe, it was very enjoyable. Uh, there were so many little nuances in the music part of it to uh, center in on. Um, Artificial Suicide is track number 14. Are we really not getting anything brutal or heavy before then? Um, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Number 11, Somebody Else. Okay, Bad Omens is not a metalcore band. They're a post-hardcore slash synth-pop band that does metalcore sometimes, I think. I, I get it now. This song is synth-pop from start to finish, and I want to complain about that, but I can't because it's so well done. I don't know how often I'll go back to this one, but it's done right and it's done well. Number 12, um, I, D, W, T, dollar sign. Dude, I love this one. I love this one. I knew that with a title that I need a Zoomer to translate for me, that this wasn't gonna be some run of the mill track. And I was not wrong about that. I, I get vibes in the hook in various parts of this song. That reminds me of the last I See Stars album, Treehouse, which I loved. Uh, where are those guys anyway? Like, I See Stars, they've been off the grid for years. I, I hope they're not breaking up, because uh, Treehouse is really good. But if you like that album, and you haven't heard this band before, I would dive right into this one first. Um, it, it's uh, really good. Uh, another noteworthy part in this song is that Noah tries his hand at scream singing here. And instead of being band number 500,000 to sound like Sam Carter of Architects, it comes off sounding more like John Mess of Dance Gavin Dance. Uh, this is a top track. Love it. Number 13, What Do You Want From Me? This is the one single that I did not hear prior to the album release. This um, sent me looking to what the band members do. And it's no surprise that the guitarist and bassist create the electronic elements in this band because it's more than half of this album and I, I I don't know how these guys wouldn't have gotten bored if all they did was play guitar and bass but they actually uh, they make a lot of the electronic elements here so we're going full nine inch nails on this one and it couldn't sound better uh, all the glitchy uh, the glitchy guitar chugs uh, sound really good. It's so uh, Nine Inch Nails sounding. Um, and I'm not even really that big of a fan of Nine Inch Nails, but the best part of everything they did, like back on their first couple albums, is uh, modernized and put into this song, and it just sounds great. I'll definitely listen to this one a ton more. And uh, yeah, I love that one. And number 14, Artificial Suicide. We're finally here. The band succeeded so much in all the places they took their music that you don't want to complain, but I can't believe that out of 15 songs, they didn't have any other metalcore-based songs here. The guitars are tuned to drop E here. The song is as catchy and groove metal as metalcore can get. The riffs are super fun to play. The song is super fun to play. Um, even on this song, Noah put some cleans in, and they sound great. The part in the second verse where Noah is clean singing behind the heavy riff and this marching drum beat is the highlight of the song. 
and then it goes into a, a breakdown that sounds really good. Uh, you can tell that they really had to uh, focus on the production because of how low the guitar was tuned when they did the breakdown part. And I think it was a success. It sounds really good. Um, the lyrics, you know, it's kind of hard to know exactly what he's talking about all the time, but it fits. It sounds interesting. Um, everything about this is a top track. I wish there were more tracks on this album like it, but this is the only one. It's the only one. Um, I don't know at the point of making this review what we're going to be closing out the album with, but it was my assumption that we're not going to go any heavier than this. So let's move on to the closer, which is number 15, Miracle. We're closing the album with more dancing Nine Inch Nails, electro metal, but it's kind of average. With a big experimental opus like this, you'd think I'd have more to say about the closer, but it isn't a standout track. It's just kind of there. It sounds like a lesser version of What Do You Want From Me. It's fine, I guess. Um, so, yeah. So I definitely wasn't wrong in going into this not knowing what we were getting. And my brain is definitely full. This felt like a pretty long journey. Bad Omens definitely are not out to be a metalcore band, despite how they're labeled. We got everything from post-hardcore to radio rock to a shit ton of synth pop with new metal and metalcore made up about 10% of this album. It's almost like metalcore is like a a side dish to like the main course of all these like post hardcore synth pop uh, elements that made up this album. Like I said, I'm not really familiar with their past work, but it wouldn't surprise me if people said they used to be more metalcore before and this was just like a big departure. Um, and if that's the case, yeah, this was definitely a departure, but it was really good though. It just, it just depends on what you're looking for. I would recommend this album to someone who isn't looking for anything in particular at all. Um, it's just good music, bro. Um, the best songs, I would say, are Artificial Suicide, Like a Villain, and Nowhere to Go. Nowhere to Go is really fucking good. Um, as far as like a song I didn't hear before, and I'm just going into a blonde, like Nowhere to Go is just like so, so good. The worst songs are Just Pretend and Miracle, and the rest range from good to great. Noah Sebastian is an amazing vocalist and lyricist, and as predicted, the music was very much his vehicle here. I wish there was more standout guitar work and more heavy songs, but what we got here is extremely well done, and I will listen to this album many times in the future, so I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. How did you feel about this album? Did you think I was being too generous, or am I not being generous enough? Uh, let me know your feedback. I had a good time with this thing. So, yeah, 9 out of 10 with many, many, many more listens to come. And we'll definitely have an eye out for what Bad Omens does in the future. And I hope they enjoy a lot of success with this album. Thanks for watching.